Hi, I'm Ray Dittinger, and I'm the author of the new Eagles Encyclopedia. Um, many of you probably remember the original Eagles Encyclopedia, which came out in 2005, right after the Eagles' trip to the Super Bowl. Um, we just felt like uh, enough things had happened and enough things had changed over the last decade uh, that it sort of called for a new book. Uh, and more than just updating the records and the statistics, which obviously change over time, uh, the real whole face of the franchise and direction of the franchise has changed in that time. Quarterbacks have come and gone, a coach has come and gone, the front office has changed, uh, and in many ways this really feels like a new era of Eagles football. So if we were going to update the book, which is something we really did want to do, this just seemed like a good time. And also the enthusiasm and the excitement in the city about this Eagles team and about this season just seemed to cry out for a, a book. And so it was, uh, it was a lot of fun to do it. It was a lot of fun to revisit the original project. Uh, there's a lot of updating. Uh, there's a lot of rewriting. Uh, and uh, there's just a lot of new stuff in there. I've added a couple new chapters. Uh, we've added profiles of players that have come in since the last nine years. We've updated uh, stuff on all the owners, the front office executives, Eagles that have been elected to the Hall of Fame. So this book is as up to date uh, as a football encyclopedia can be, and it reflects what we all know about sports is teams evolve and cities evolve and fan bases evolve. And there are some people now that are, were young, maybe too young to be Eagles fans 10 years ago that have grown into being Eagles fans now, and they have an encyclopedia that they can call their own. I was excited about it. I was excited about doing it because I just felt that um, it just feels like a new team. It just feels like a new team. Now the team, when we did the first book, was a team that had had enormous success, uh, had been to a Super Bowl, uh, had won a lot of games, uh, and was very popular with some very good players. Uh, but since then, and in the last year, all those people have moved on, and new people have come in, and there's a feeling of just turning a page, and the team feels like it's new. I, I think the city has kind of been re-energized. And there's a feeling that this team has a chance to do really great things. And so to go back into the book and kind of bring it up to date, which we have done as much as we could possibly do, uh, just sort of brought me, brought me to that point where I felt like, you know, this is the same team, but in a way it's a different team. And I think the book reflects that. My emotions about the team remain largely the same. Uh, I mean, I grew up in the city. I grew up as a, as a fan of this team. Um, there are a couple, there's a picture of me in this book uh, as a 10-year-old with Chuck Bednarik at the Eagles training camp. Uh, I mean, I lived and died with this team, uh, as any young boy would do. Um, but when I became a reporter and I became a journalist, uh, I had to step away from that, and I became uh, more objective. That's not to say I don't have emotion about the team. I certainly want to see the team succeed. Uh, I would love to see this team win a Super Bowl for the sake of the city, for the mental health of the city. I, I think the fans here, uh, I think they're the best football fans in America. Uh, I think this city at its heart is a football town above all else. And I think they would celebrate a Super Bowl in a way that the, the, they've had parades for other sports, but I think an Eagles parade would, would be bigger and better than all of them. So I recognize that emotion and I, I sort of tap into that. My personal emotions are a little bit more distant because I feel like I have to for the sake of objectivity, but I'm very, very, very attuned to the emotion of the city, and I hope I, I, hope I kind of reflect that in the book. I'm very optimistic about where they are right now. Uh, the, I mean, the Andy Reid era was, was a very good 14 seasons on balance. I mean, he came in and took over a team that was in pretty bad shape. Uh, and in short order, he built it up into a playoff team and then ultimately a team that went to a Super Bowl. Uh, but as things happen in professional sports, they kind of run their course. A and by the end, uh, they needed a change. I think he needed a change. I think the team needed a change. I think the city needed a change. Uh, so he moved on and they brought in a, a young coach from college that had never been in the NFL before. And nobody really knew if he could succeed with his approach and his style of football. But I think it's pretty obvious now, just in season number two, that he's a really good coach, and he definitely has a plan, and it seems to be pointed towards success. And I think that's reflected in the mood of the city. I think the fans here are, the optimism of the fans here now, to me, is very, very much like the optimism you felt early on in the Andy Reid era, that this is a coach that knows what he's doing. He's got some good players here, 
and we're headed towards big things. And I think the city feels the same thing about Chip Kelly. There were some spectacular individual moments uh, over the last nine years that, uh, that I was able to incorporate that have happened since the first book. Um, a game in, uh, I'll, I'll just pick out one game, was a game in New York a couple of years ago uh, when the Eagles were hopelessly behind in the fourth quarter and rallied uh, and won the game on the final play of the game when the Giants punted and Deshaun Jackson took the punt on one bounce and ran it back for a touchdown on the final play of the game as the clock ran out. It, it was the first game in the history of the National Football League, which goes back 100 years, that ever ended on a kick return, with a team winning it on a kick return at the end. It's basically the same thing as a Roy Hobbs home run in the ninth. First time that had ever happened in the NFL. Uh, and that was something that I was able to incorporate in this book. Nick Foles throwing seven touchdown passes in one game. Mike Vick having a historic Monday night game down in Washington. Um, I mean, there were a couple of really, really spectacular individual performances they were able to take here and put them in the chapter which I called Milestone Moments, which uh, they didn't necessarily win you a championship. That's a whole separate chapter, postseason. But some spectacular, in some cases historic, individual moments that were able to put in the Milestone Moments, milestone moments chapter that uh, they were a lot of fun to revisit and a lot of fun to relive. I think that question probably uh, takes me to the point of, of, of a player who maybe emerged as a greater player than I thought when we did the first book. And I would probably say Brian Westbrook. Uh, when we did the book in 04, 05, Brian was still at that point a young player uh, who had a role on the team, but not, he wasn't a star. Um, from, the point when, from that point moving forward, Brian became a true star. Uh, and that's, I don't think any of us really saw that coming. I mean, he was a small guy who went to Villanova, uh, went to a small school, uh, was a third round draft choice. You knew he could play, but you never thought that he could become one of the really great players in the history of the franchise, and he did. Uh, I, I mean, as he, as he finished up his career, he finished, he had more touches, meaning he handled the ball, rushing attempts and receptions, than any player in the team's history. And he accounted for more total yards rushing, receiving, and kick returns than any player in Eagles history. Uh, and that was, since the first book came out, he emerged and went from just being a really good player to being a truly great player in this history of this franchise. And uh, if I could think about one guy whose stature kind of went from here to here uh, since the first book was published, yeah, Brian Westbrook would be that guy. So needless to say, his profile required significant rewriting.